And a big happy hello and welcome back to Tech Forge, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Back after a little bit of a break. I had my brother's wedding recently. We had a Bucks weekend away, which was a lot of fun. And then the wedding, of course, uh, big congratulations to Nick and Naleshny. Welcome to the family, Nash. So what have we been working on in the meantime? We have been working on some Ryzen 5 1600 overclocking. Now, this is the short version of the video. It will basically give a little bit of an overview of the steps I took, uh, the results along the way. For those who are interested in the real nitty gritty of what went down, I will eventually have linked in the description below a much longer video, probably somewhere around about 20 minutes or so. And that will take care of a lot of the finer points. I'd, I've split it up this way because I would much rather have a little bite-sized version for people to try first and then maybe have a look at the much harder to digest stuff, just so you're not swamped with details. But that's enough for me rambling on. Let's get back to business. So before we do any overclocking, some baseline scores using stock CPU and memory settings would be nice. A quick Cinebench R15 run will do just nicely and that comes out to 1106 multi-threaded score and 141 single-threaded Cinebench points. Temperatures under load are important to monitor when overclocking and it appears the water loop is doing a bang up job of cooling the CPU at around 36 degrees Celsius. Let's see how that changes as we overclock. Stock the R5-1600 runs at 3.4GHz on all cores under load, and I know this processor can run 3.8GHz under normal voltage, so let's test that out and see what sort of gain there is. Already we see a big improvement over stock configuration, up to 1,230 multi-threaded points and 154 single-threaded points, which is 11 and 9% respectively. A quick ADA run for temps and stability, and we'll move on. On air cooling, this CPU won't do 3.9 GHz on stock volts, but underwater it just might. Worth a shot at any rate. We passed the run and scores have gone up a little more, now 14% and 11% over stock, but will it be stable under ADA load? Appears stable enough to go on with the next step up, temps are still well under control, so let's shoot for 4 GHz. These first gen Ryzen chips start to need a lot more voltage around the 4 GHz mark, so I'll throw on a little more. 75 millivolts might be enough to pass in a bench, but I'm iffy on 8 or 64, so well, let's check it out. We managed to pass in a bench and saw a small increase again, but the voltage readout in CPU-Z doesn't fill me with confidence for the larger loads. I couldn't get it to crash running the CPU cache and memory stress loads, but adding in FPU to really hammer the overclock shows it isn't going to be 100% stable, so a little more voltage is needed and probably some adjustments to the power delivery. For a complete long-winded rundown of the overclocking process, there will be a version uploaded soon that is much longer and more in-depth and will be linked in the description below if you want to check that out. We passed Cinebench again, no surprise there. Scores down a couple of points, but well within run-to-run -run variance. The real test is passing the stress test with FPU added in to make sure it can handle the heaviest workloads. Where it crashed very quickly before adjusting power delivery settings, we now see things humming along quite nicely. Temps are still well under control and I am happy with 4 GHz at 1.35 volts. Now it's time to get the memory dialed in before doing the final stress test. This 16 GB memory kit is rated to 3200 MHz C1434 latency which in itself is quite decent memory speeds for Ryzen, but I really want to utilise the inbuilt memory profiles Asus have included done by the renowned overclocker, the Still. Now that the memory is dialed in, we will see our final scores in Cinebench, and they have jumped to 1,354 on the multi-thread and 164 points on the single thread, which is 22% and 16% over stock out-of-the-box performance. Not bad for a few hours work, Last but not least, we must load this overclock up with a big long stress test, at least an hour, with CPU, cache, FPU and memory all being stressed to ensure the system is stable under very demanding workloads. After more than an hour copping a massive hammering, the overclock has held up fine. This is the overclock I've been running daily for quite a while now and haven't had any issues. 
The temps are A-OK -okay thanks to the water cooling loop and the performance gained is well worth it in the end, not just for productivity tasks, but the same performance gains will be seen in gaming as well. <laughs> well, maybe, how about that? Managing to hit 4 GHz at the 1.35 volt mark is a fairly reasonable achievement on the first gen Ryzen chips. So what do you think? Is it really worth overclocking? Is it something you're interested in? Would you like to see more videos of this sort of nature? I'd really love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Hit me up any old time. I'll get back to you, I promise. Thanks again for watching Tech4. Join me, host Nath. We'll see you in the next one.